Okay, hello everyone, it's Michael Baltos from orderflows.com and today I'm going to talk about one way order flow will improve your trading and I'm going to show you in today's market analysis for Tuesday, March 21st, 2017. You know, it was interesting today in the equities, it was uh, up but then it was just down, 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 a couple bounces up and but mostly down, it was a big down day and but there was something in a non-equity market that was very very telling and again you know it's one thing to talk about order flow but when I show you it's just gonna you know hopefully can open your eyes to the value of order flow and you know before I jump in a brief disclaimer this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only it should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor an investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You know, there's a reason why you have a disclaimer like this, because, you know, people come into trading and they think it's uh, the answer to their money problems when, you know, trading is a skill. You have to take time and you have to learn it. You know, if, if you don't learn it, you can't just all of a sudden sit down in front of a screen and start uh, punching orders into the system thinking you're going to make money. You know, some people will. I mean, you could get a bunch of monkeys in a room and give them a bunch of typewriters and sooner or later someone's going to produce a uh, coherent Shakespeare novel. But, um, you know, in general, you know, trading takes time to learn and, you know, order flow helps you understand the market. Okay, so this is a soybean chart. Okay, wow, people say soybeans, big fucking deal. You know, soybeans, uh, you know, it's not a glamorous contract. It's not the, uh, you know, it's it's not the crude oil. It's not the bonds. It's not the E-mini S&Ps. But, you know, a lot of people have made a lot of money trading beans. Um, you know, you just, you know, people don't want to admit it, but it's actually a great contract for trading. And if you're looking at this, you know, you say, yeah, yeah, it would be nice to have been able to buy down here. Um, you know, and you got a nice rally from basically 998. It did come back here, test these lows. It held. And rally back up. I mean, you know, if you could have a reason to be buying down in here, you know, and down in here, wouldn't you want to know? And you know, if you're just looking at this chart, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, I know candlestick guys will say, oh, you know, it's so obvious you had a hammer down here, or a pin bar, you know, whatever they're calling it nowadays. Um, yeah, you, you could have bought it. You know, well, what about here? This was the low at this time. You know, it, it didn't hold. It still made new lows. You know, from nine. Um, you know, this low is 997, got all the way down to 995. So you would have been stopped out there. You would have been stopped out here. So, you know, it, it's one of those things, you know, when, when it works, people say, yeah, it's so obvious you should have bought down here on, on the candlestick chart. But then, you know, then they're forgetting about this one here. Um, so what I'm going to show you with, with order flows, you know, today it just really stood out, um, this low that it was just like the, standout trade of the day you know even though equities were all over the place you know and, and I, I get uh you know, i get emails from other people that run trading rooms saying oh you know we had a 30 point day today it was great but um you know i like things that are a bit more solid that i could put my hand on okay so this is the order flow chart in the soybeans at that time at the low and what do you see at this low okay so you know this was the first um hammer that failed okay then you had the, the one down here you got a few things going on down here. When we look at this volume, 1084, 1015, 1072, that is solid. I mean, even in this bar here, 1022, this is all solid support from an institutional level. Um, you know, if you follow beans at all, you, you know that size above 500 is, I say rare, but you know, it does happen. Um, and here you've got, you know, three price levels in this bar. Even this one, 400 is quite big. Um, you know, and even in this previous bar, a thousand, you know, this information is only inf there on a, on a footprint chart. He said, if you're looking at the bar chart, like I just showed you, it's not there. So, you know, you have very solid support down here and this is, you know, between 995 and, um, 996. So at, at this 996 to 95 level, you've got 1000, 2000, 3000, um, you know, 4,000 plus, you know, another 400 here, just trading on the bid that people are bidding there. I'm not even talking about what's trading on the offer at this point. Really what's getting my attention is this, the size that's being traded on the bid. So, you know, you have a big, big buyer or, you know, several big buyers all defending this level for whatever reason. And then, you know, the market did rally up, rally, 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 starts coming back down. 
we get back down here, 995 and a half. You see the buying, yeah, it doesn't get through that level. It's still holding. Even down here, you got this selling and balance right here at the low, point of control on this bar right at the low. And then it's just, you know, just straight up, straight up, straight up, all the way, you know, all the way up to the highs of the day. You know, so, I mean, that was, you know, we're only at, uh, let's just start at 10.03, you know, just straight up, you know, aggressive buying, all of these deltas, all positive. You know, this was, and then you got up here, you know, then you start, you know, it starts changing up here, negative deltas. But from, um, you know, 9.96 all the way up to 10.08, now, what is that? 96 10.08 it's 12 cents you know at you know one cent move in the soybeans is fifty dollars so that's a six hundred dollar move there um you know that that was i'm not saying you were sold it up at 10.08 you know i mean say you only you know, sell it at 10.06 or something you know at least a 10 cent move um you know but that was that was the you know the, <laughs> That was very glaring there. I mean, that's not something you see all the time. But again, it's only information you're going to see if you're looking at a footprint chart. Again, you know, if, if you're looking at this bar chart, you're not going to see it in there. You'll see, oh, you got a hammer here. But yeah, you also had a hammer here. Yes, some hammers. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say you had them up here, but, you know, definitely you had one here, right, that failed, stopped you out. But this one, you know, was very, very obvious in the footprint chart. Next up is the uh, S and P's. I honestly, I wasn't gonna do a video today, but um, you know, someone messaged me and said, "Hey, you know what? Let's talk about the S and P's." Okay. So I, I remember early in, in the room today. Um, you know, we had we had made these highs this morning. Um, you know, just after the cash open. You know, there's a divergence up there. Um, I wasn't a big fan of this divergence, but we did sell off from the high down into the lows. You know, the one thing that I, I was looking at, yeah, I wasn't necessarily convinced that we're going to have such a big down day, honestly. Um, but one thing I did notice a little bit late, you know, I'll say late, but you know, 9.30ish, is you know these point of controls really starting to migrate lower. You know, earlier you had the point of control up here, then you got another point of control down here. And then down here, and then down here. So you know, you're 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 getting lower points of controls, um, you know, throughout the morning, and you're just coming down. You know, it's all negative deltas. It wasn't as clear. I mean, I kept going. I at first I was I was really keen in on the, on the three range chart. I mean, you see on a day, you know, people you know, one of the questions came up. You know, what's the value of the volume profile? Well, on a day that's trending, okay, look for. On a day that's trending down, look for lower points of controls forming, and you're getting them. You know, you had this one here, then you got this forming in here, then you got this one here, then you got this one. Um, and again, I didn't expect it to go as as low as this and get you know this this other big profile down here. Um, you know, I, I, I was, realistically I was looking for somewhere down into the 50s, not all the way down into the 30s, but um, you know, this was something that was giving it away, the lower points of control on a market that's trending. On a, on a trending day, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get lower points of control. On a trending day down, on a trending day up, you're going to get higher points of control. And, you know, we could talk about the ratios. You know, here it was a divergence. You want to say went from a divergence sell at the high of the day to a, to this divergence here. It did pop up a little bit, started coming back down. Um, you got another divergence here. Um, you know, again, I'm not a big fan of just trading divergences by themselves. And, but again, you know, the other thing that I, I like to point out, you know, this is a 10 range chart, um, you know, on a three range chart between 930 and 950, you had like six failed divergences. When you start getting in a short period of time, when you get failed divergences, so like here, this is on the 10 range chart, got it at 958, 1006, 1011, you get three failed divergences in quick succession. So you're making new lows. And on trending days, you're going to have repeated failed divergences. Okay. And, you know, that, that's just, that, that's what happens on trend days. So when you see them on days like this, you know, you could be, um, very hesitant to take longs in this case on the way down, you know, buying divergences, be very careful. Okay. Now, if it's a trending day up and you're getting a lot of failed divergences to the upside, which you saw in the last couple of weeks when, when we were rallying all that time, 
you're getting a lot of failed divergences on the upside. But when you get them, you know, happening in pretty quick, you know, one after the other, so to speak, you know, here's 958, 1006, 1011, you've already got three in, what is that, 13 minutes. That's not a good sign for the market that it's going to be rallying. And even look at this. I mean, the other point is when you had one, I mean, look at all this negative delta, 3,000, 1,300, 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. Yeah, positive delta, 3, 6, okay, fair enough. It, you, know, you got a little bit of a bounce. Uh, then, um, you know, how is it again? It's all minus 2,000, minus 400, you know, 1,500. Yeah, okay, it's not getting stronger. Keep going lower. And every time you get a positive delta, it's weaker. Um, 1,500. Still 12,000 or 12, 1,200 negative delta, 300. So you went from your first one, 3,000. First time you hit this divergence, you had some decent buying come in, 3,000. Second time, new low, new divergence, 1,500. So it's getting weaker. Uh, the third time, divergence, 300. So you can see the buying is actually, even though you're hitting these lows, you're getting, you know, the buying is, is weakening a little bit. But you're still getting the, the strong negative deltas, 2,000, 1,200, 1,900. You know, then it picks up again, uh, 4,000, 2,900, 1,300. You know, here, um, again, yeah, you see these blue lines like this. Is These are some of those indicators. I won't get into that here. Um, you know, again, it's just, you know, it's just under pressure all day. I mean, every time you get a little bit of, start to string together a couple positive deltas, you just get whacked with some very strong negative deltas again. Um, but, you know, it's not until, you know, sort of later in the day, you know, you get this divergence here, get a ratio. Again, if I'm looking to get long off of a, a divergence, I, I want to have a ratio in the order flow. You know, and I want to have it relatively soon. Here's not a divergence. You know, this was a bit interesting. I remember looking at this, you know, coming down here, the delta is getting weaker, 1900, 600, 181 on the low. So it's still negative, but you know, this delta is decreasing instead of getting, you know, stronger, it's getting a little bit, it's lightening up. So minus two, minus 1900, minus 600, minus 180, and then boom, positive, um, 2200, 2100, you know, so it's strong in here. Um, you know, and, and you get a nice little rally here, you know, from the 2350 area. You know, all the way up to the you know the 54 area, and, you know, and further it keeps going up. But still, I mean, you know, the, you would have been if you know on a day it was such a big down day. You know, you got to be careful trying to buy it because you know any bounces that you get, you know, if it's a strong trending day down, any bounces that you get are going to be short lived. You know, don't 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 think you can get a 10 point bounce off a low where there's just immense selling going on. Um, you know, you'll get a little bit of a bounce, but but not much. Um, you know, and you just have, you know, other divergences. So here you have a divergence and you got a ratio afterwards, you know, a, a ratio that I like. You got one, two coming in again. You're getting some strong deltas here. Well, this is a 400, but this one's strong. 22,400, 2,900, um, you know, 3,000. Really at this point, I was looking at this. And this is a 10 range chart. And this gives you an idea how fast this market's moving. You know, one minute between these two bars, two minutes between this. This one is eight minutes. Um, yeah, you know, I was expecting more of a bounce a little quicker. Um, as it took a little bit of a while to get up to here. Um, so, you know, this is from, you know, the 45 and a half area up to the, you know, the, almost the 50 area. It's like 49 um, before it starts to sort of peter out again. Um, and then just sort of goes sideways. And you get that, that late uh, sell-off going down into the close. I mean, we're under so much pressure today. I didn't expect to see us get any sort of rally going into the close. You know, I mean everybody was had a very negative outlook on the market um yeah i'll just i'll pull up the uh the three range real quick because you know on the three range i remember talking about this in in the room this morning i was a little bit late to the party and i'm picking this up actually but just going back here i think it was around here It was this, or what time was that? Somewhere in here. Um, well, there was a couple of things. Okay, so first, talk about this. So this is 916, you have a divergence here. Okay. You have one divergence here. 
So I remember I was looking at this three range. So it's 916 in the first one, 925 the second one here, another divergence that fails. Um, 927. So within 10 minutes, 11 minutes, you so far have had three failed divergences, which to me is usually a sign, um, you know, pay attention. If we make new lows, we can go lower here. You know, I don't want to say three is, is the number, but you know what? After three, it's really got my attention that, you know, it's probably going to start failing. And then here you get one fails. I'll show you a new low here. You got another divergence. So 928. So from 916 to 928, you got four already. So, you know, at that point, it's like, hey, stick a fork in this market. It's going lower. It's done. And he's taking out the lows with, you know, selling imbalances again, which is a sign that we're going to go lower. You know, so you know, at 9.30, you got another divergence. At this price, it's 23.61 uh, and a quarter. Again, you know, we do rally up here from 61 and a quarter all the way up to 64 and a quarter. Um, and you just sort of go sideways, hang around. And it's not, you know, that's at what time is at 9.30. It takes from 9.30... I remember I was, I was looking at it. I didn't realize that and all those failed divergences because I was, I remember I was talking about some other stuff. But, um, you know, by the time I realized it was around 940 or something, you know, it, it's a bit long for me to, you know, 20 minutes. It's not until 953 that you start making these new lows here. And once you do that, 954, 955, you know, we're trading 57, um, you know, on the volume profile, you know, well, it's hard to see here because we've got such big volume down there. But, um, you know, on the, we had put in this new level here. I was looking for a new level to be forming down in here. I mean, we got through this level and actually put it in a bit lower than I was expecting. I was expecting around the 58, 59 level. Um, you know, but we started putting in that volume down here at 55 and a quarter. You know, at that time, 20,000 on this profile was all those other point of controls were around the 20,000 area. And then we you know we just continued to sell off there, um, but but the sign was there between 916 and 930, where you got basically four um, failed divergences in quick succession. Yeah, you, know, you didn't yeah you know, on the 10 range chart it took a bit longer to form, but you know on the three range chart it was a bit clearer there, and the lower points of control were very clear. So you know it was you know those were you know those were some of the signs early in the day. You know by by 930. On you know what sort of day you could be looking at. The other thing that I want to talk about again, yeah, it, it's uh, you know it's something you know. I mean, the beauty of order flow, right, is you got all this information on your charts that you know nobody else is is seeing because they're just looking at bar charts. And you know something that's that's quite important here is this: are these stacked imbalances? And I, I talk about this, um, you know, before many times. I even did a video on it, and it's what I call it. It's, it's these overlapping stacked imbalances. Why is it overlapping? Well, you know, when I see a stacked imbalance, I draw out an, a zone, right? It's five bars, one, two, three, four, five. I expect the, the market to move within these five bars. I don't look for a stacked imbalance to hold all day. Um, you know, some people do. I think it's wrong. You know, they'll look for it to come back up in there. Okay, fair enough. You know, each, every person has their own way of interpreting order flow. Um, this is how I interpret it. But when I have an, what I call an overlapping, right? So I've got this stack buying imbalance and my zone is here. It goes out five bars. If within these five bars, either above or below, in this case it's below, I get an opposite stacked imbalance. You know, in this case, I got a stacked imbalance below this zone. To me, that's very bearish. You know, it doesn't matter that it's below. If I could have, you know, the market could be starting to rally. Then I get up here, I got a stack selling imbalance. I would treat it the same. Go with this. Go with the second imbalance when you have an opposing imbalance, right? You have the buying imbalance, then you got the selling imbalance within these five bars. That's usually, that's a high percentage trade, very high percentage. And what did the market do? Boom, you know, we just sold off, you know, within within minutes you know we're trading all of a sudden you know we're trading from 67 next thing you know we're, we're trading all the way down at 63 64 63 and a half down here um 63 and a half 64 um you know and you know that's from you know what time is this 925 you know within to 927 you know that's two and a half minutes that you just sold off you know four points 
and I'm not even talking about you know the rest of this moved on but that was something that was also very um, very convincing early in the order flow again it's um, you know if you're not using order flow you're, you're missing out on this information and it's it's really valuable information again you know I mean if if there's only you know, I, I said at the beginning of this video if there's one thing you could take away from the order flow right was was you know I was talking about this uh, soybean chart here after the open at uh, eight something uh, where was it here it was this one down here you know, no sorry nine o'clock you know all this volume I mean if that was you know when I created this video this is the one thing that I really wanted to talk about you know is if there was one thing you could take away from order flow it's this you know looking at the volume using your head you know everyone wants to computerize everything and make everything automatic you know and yeah this could probably be automated um, in, into some sort of trading algo but you know the best traders are people that think for themselves right not necessarily rely on any indicator because you, know, you start in you start uh, programming the stuff in there and then you know it's going to show up you know how you're going to define it I mean I, I know how to define it but it's just easier to look at it and use the computer on your head right I mean it doesn't take any special skills or anything to sit there and say hey you know what 1000 1000 1000 that's big numbers to be appearing there in the soybeans especially at the low so you know that the market's being defended and you can see it traded from this low straight up to the highs uh, without much um, you know without much resistance I mean yeah it came off a little bit here but that's it I mean you know started going sideways here oh, sorry didn't trade up to this high I take that back I mean, we did test the low again here you know um, you know, but this again this was another sign so say you missed the first part and you're just showing up here at 10 you know 10 30 again this is very bullish you know then again you know this is the Delta scalper but that's another story this here is very bullish as well so it did give you another chance to get into this market and you know the other thing I talk about you know that you know I said one way so I'm actually talking about two ways is is the imbalances looking at the imbalances you know this information is is there is available it's not like some secret information that they're hiding from you you just have to have the right software that analyzes the order flow that's coming into the market simple so you know the, the next thing that I want to talk about real quick is uh, you know one or two indicators okay so this indicator this is the volatiles transition it's an indicator um, it's going to show you some you know, no no signals earlier you know I, I opened my charts this morning in here so it reads the order flow as it comes in so it's not going to show up on on past charts um, but this morning again you know pretty uneventful morning in the Dow I'm just sitting there watching it uh, I got a buy signal here okay you know this day was a very volatile day um you know it started to work out uh then came back down and market sold off so you know this one you know that would have stopped you out okay you know, i'm showing it to you showing it to you full disclosure i don't need to see that oh you know they there was a trade you only showing the winners okay so you had the one trade you know first one was a loser then look at this you got a nice uh sell here right at you know one of them well, you know, what you want to call it, you know, 840. It just dropped, dropped, dropped into the 700s. You get a buy here, short lived, rallied up before selling off. Don't know if, you know, so from 840 down to, you know, the, the 800 area. Uh, this buy didn't work out. You got a short buy here. You could have got something out of it. A little, sorry, a short sell here, a little sell came off you know a little buy here got something you know maybe could have got something out of it before it sold off if you're trailing your stop you know trail your stops um, there was no signal there um, this buy started to work out that would have stopped you out so you know you had you know one nice winner you've had about two or three you know stop outs okay fair enough and then here you get another sell signal in here you know somewhere around 720 to 725 yeah it comes does come back up to 730 yeah I mean I don't know if you're trailing your stop would have you been stopped out somewhere in here with a small profit yeah maybe 
again, you know, if, if you're a little bit more generous, I mean, if you're seeing how the volatility, you know, how volatile this day is already, we sold off 100 points. Um, you know, you may approach it a little bit different. If you stayed in your position, you would have been handsomely uh, rewarded. Obviously, if you're short at 720, you, know, you saw how this market sold off quite violently down into, what's this area? Down in here where you get a buy signal. And again, if you're trailing your stop, probably would have been stopped out. If not, you'd probably still be in that position to catch a little bit of a rally. Um, a little bit of, you know, a little sell here. Um, this one I don't think he would have taken because this bar couldn't uh, take out the, the low of the signal bar. Um, this one, yeah, I don't think it would have taken for the same reason. This one, yeah, you would have taken um, and gotten out in here when you got a buy signal. Again, I don't know, depending on where you're placing your stop in here. Seeing how this market is, you know, already had a 300 point range. I don't know if you'd be giving it, you know, five ticks. You might want to be giving it a little bit more than that. You know, you can adjust your levels on more volatile days. I mean, it's up to you. Yeah, but it's a move from whatever, 705 up to 735 ish. Could have got something out of it. Then later in the day, you get a nice sell signal in here you know again you know one two three four this is the fourth bar that you get your cell in here again you know I, I like to let it take me into the market at this point i'm not short i'm not short i'm not short but this bar would have gotten me short you know within you know several bars it's got to start its move if it doesn't it's, it's probably not going to make that move obviously so again you know a move from 705 back down to the 680s and this one didn't work out so it would have stopped you out this one and depending on where you put your stop might have stopped you out uh, then you get another sell signal in here pretty quick 670 that area you know it just sort of takes it back down in here you know, depending on where you're trailing your stop out I don't know where you would have gotten out um, this buy didn't work out that would have stopped you out the sell probably would have stopped you out this one no reason to take that one same reason here no reason to take it it's not it doesn't start selling off until how many bars later this one yeah you definitely would have gotten in you could have got something out of this move yeah and that was uh you know then later in the day here this one this one would have got you in you would have trailed your stop got out but then you got short here is nice sell signal you know if you're trailing your stop really quick in here you would have been stopped out here with a small profit but if you again you're giving it some leeway again you know you're already talking a 300 point range day maybe you're going to give it a little bit you know you got a 300 point range day right you know you're going to get a lot of movement so you might want to you know, catch the big moves sometimes you, you got to expand it out a little bit your your stops so you might want to instead of trailing your stop so close behind you know you might want to be looking at you know, a, a different level you know a, a level above you know the bar where you enter and if you did that you know if, if you were astute enough to catch that hey you know what we're on a very volatile day I should widen out my my stops um, a bit more you know again you'd have caught a nice move from you know, the 660 level you know down into the 620s so you know there was there were moves to be had today um, in this market so, you know, thanks for watching this video uh, to learn more about the trading software that I use in this presentation. And, you know, if you want to learn more about order flow, visit my website, www.orderflows.com. And thank you, and I'll see you on the inside. Bye-bye.